Go. Olá, gente. Bem-vindo para todos. Bem-vindo a nosso seminário. Hoje temos a honra de ter um de ter um tópico muito, muito, uh, como se chama, uh, na atenção da imprensa e de todo a uh, descoberta de um estado que se chama Tetraquark, ontem Luciano Maiani, o chefe da teoria do SEM, uh, mandou um open sobre isso. Um, o palestrante de hoje é Tomasz Kwarnicki, Kwarnicki, deveria pronunciar isso, né? ele é originariamente da Cracóvia, na Polônia, é, estudou no Instituto de Física Nuclear da Academia de Ciências Polonesa, um, depois ele foi para a Alemanha, para a DESI, um, e depois ele foi para a maioria do tempo, ele ele trabalhou também no Superconducting Super Collider, que é uma coisa que muitos de vocês são demais jovens para, para, para lembrar, foi um laboratório cancelado. Mas ele trabalhou muito tempo na Universidade de Syracuse, em Nova, perto de Nova York, onde muitos de vocês conhecem a Mônica Nunes, ela agora está para postdoc lá, o Thomas é professor. Ele é um membro da colaboração que descobri isso no estado de, de matéria, que é interpretado como tetraquark, um, que pode ser interpretado como tetraquark. Como sempre, os estudantes, por favor, no chat, ponham aqui, ponham o seu nome e o seu array. Um, ele vai, uh, por favor, se mude, uh, por, fa por favor, se mude depois da... Uh, se você tem uma pergunta, pode interromper, é melhor escrever no chat. Se não, vai ter um tempo de perguntas depois do seminário. É, você pode pôr no chat ou você pode pôr a voz. Mas durante a, a fala, por favor, por, por favor, mude para evitar inconvenientes técnicos. Um, thank you very much for turning up here, Thomas. You can start. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, invitation. Uh, I uh, love Brazil. I have been to Rio several times. I never made it to Sao Paulo, so I, I hope to make it uh, sometime. Uh, nowadays, we have to do everything virtually. Um, so, uh, you invited me uh, to talk about uh, latest LHCB discovery of JSI, JSI mass structures. And I will uh, get to it at the end, but uh, I, I think it will be more interesting to you uh, to hear about uh, uh, all the similar developments uh, in recent years, uh, so you can understand better uh, the importance of of this uh, uh, new discovery. Uh, so le let me actually take you back all the way uh, back to the beginning uh, of, of, of quark model uh, in 1960s out of uh, a light hadron zoo people did use that uh, uh, quarks uh, should exist and hadrons are just the uh, bound states of quarks. Uh, and uh, let me use this slide as a definition. Uh, anything which is just simple uh, quark ante quark meson or free quark uh, baryon, uh, I, I will uh, call conventional uh, hadrons and anything else of hadronic nature will be an exotic uh, hadron. With exception, we can include the um, uh, nuclei, which are kind of bound states of baryons, uh, also as, as conventional systems. Now, already at the beginning of uh, a quark model, both Gelman and, and Spike, 
to work uh, independently. They, they both recognize the symmetries, uh, uh, hadronic symmetries they discovered. They also allowed for more complicated uh, quark structures, uh, namely two quarks and two antiquarks, a tetraquark or, or uh, three quarks, sorry, four quarks and antiquark, uh, pentaquark, and you can actually go on. Even though at that point, uh, strong dynamics was not yet uh, uh, completely understood. This came later uh, uh, in the 70s in form of uh, QCD. Now, uh, QCD uh, brought uh, a new player into the game and introduced uh, uh, gluons that mediate uh, strong interactions, but they also have color uh, charge themselves, uh, a complex charge which uh, combines color and, and anti-color. But as color objects, uh, they can in principle start playing a role as uh, hadron constituents as well, not only as uh, mediators of interactions. Um, so this uh, leads uh, to uh, predictions of additional hadronic states, which we sometimes call QCD exotics, that involved gluon excitations, either uh, you know mixed in into meson and, bio, uh, and baryons, which would be called hybrids, or uh, a suggestion that uh, uh, just two gluons could. Uh, uh, create a, a bound state, uh, which would be a glue ball. Now, obviously, this is a very interesting uh, suggestion, and we are still looking uh, for this. Uh, however, my, my uh, talk will concentrate uh, mostly on, on multi-quark states, the tri-quarks and pentaquarks. Now, uh, as you know, QCD is a strongly coupled uh, theory. Uh, it, uh, uh, a, a coupling constant can become very large. Uh, at uh, larger uh, separations, uh, which uh, is uh, probably related to the fact that uh, if you try to uh, describe uh, interquark interactions in potential way, uh, you get uh, potential which is uh, confining at, at large uh, distances, it doesn't uh, go to zero. Even though at short distances, uh, uh, it starts behaving uh, like QED, so uh, a, a Coulomb load. Now, when talking about uh, had a hadron spectroscopy, <coughs> we are dealing with QCD in, in confining uh, region with large coupling constants, so perturbative calculations uh, cannot be applied, which is a, a big problem. Now, we, because uh, uh, interactions are of confining type, uh, even in Coulomb, pure Coulomb potential, you expect infinite number of states, uh, but they get very crowded when you approach uh, when it's flooding, a potential flooding yard to zero. In this type of potential, obviously, you also get uh, infinite, uh, infinite number of excitations, uh, which will accommodate uh, all kind of uh, angular momentum between quarks and also radial excitation. So a very rich uh, spectrum of particles which you can produce from this. So I mentioned about difficulties uh, in applying uh, QCD directly to uh, predict the uh, hadron um, spectrum. Uh, now, lattice QCD are pretty successful and they can uh, precisely uh, reproduce mass spectrum of uh, uh, lower excitations in every quark configuration. Uh, they do produce uh, simulations for excitations, but uh, you should realize that 
These are only approximate simulations because they usually neglect the fact that these states are unstable, which sometimes is, uh, is a very bad approximation. And also, if you try to apply a lattice QCD to multi-quark states, this becomes difficult because these states are uh, larger and you have a very large number of operators that, that you need to uh, calculate. So as, as a co consequence, uh, when, when doing uh, hadronic uh, spectroscopy, especially for uh, in the region of higher excitations or multi-quark states, uh, you have to rely on QCD motivated phenomenology rather than uh, first principles of QCD. Um, and there's a large variety of approaches. So, uh, to some, a lot of things are predicted, but you know, uh, it's not clear which models uh, are right, which are, are wrong. Therefore, uh, that field has been still pretty much driven by, uh, by experimental data. And this is why in recent years, I, I have been actually uh, doing this because it's a lot of fun to discover uh, new things. Now, QCD, uh, brought uh, a new important element. Uh, now let's let's see how you create a simple uh, meson in QCD. So you combine uh, quark, which is in color triplet, with antiquark, which is in color anti triplet. And if you look at all possible uh, combinations of such systems. Uh, uh, then some combinations, depending on, on how uh, color uh, combines, uh, will have repulsive forces, but there's this uh, uh, not only color neutral, but uh, uh, in color singlet, uh, uh, QCD predicts uh, attractive force, and this is what's responsible for, uh, for uh, uh, creation of mesons. However, QCD also uh, predicts that if you uh, combine quark and uh, quark, those two color triplets, then there will be some color combinations that uh, will involve repulsive forces, but color anti-triplet uh, uh, combination will have attractive force now, perhaps not as strong as between quark and anti-quark. Uh, perturbatively, it's like half. Uh, nobody knows for sure what happens uh, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, confining regime, but probably these features preserve. Uh, so this uh, gives a strong suggestion that uh, uh, two quarks uh, would like to stick together and uh, create a color building block. Since it's colored, it, it cannot be directly observed, but it will bind with an other color objects to create uh, uh, drops. Uh, so, for example, you can, just like we were making uh, mesons out of color triplet and color anti-triplet it was quark anti-quark you can uh, diquark actually does act uh, in terms of color as uh, as anti-quark so you can replace anti-quark with diquark and you expect they will bind right uh, so that's uh, that, that's one way you can make a baryon which is in addition to this uh, direct coupling of, 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 of free quarks, which is also possible in QCD. And, and how much this diqua configuration matters versus uh, a more democratic way of, of binding quarks is still an area of active uh, experimental and theoretical uh, research. Now we can play th this game farther uh, we can also replace that uh, uh, color triplet uh, instead of having a simple quark, uh, we can put anti diquark which will uh, act as color uh, uh, triplet. 
And again, you expect them to have attractive forces. So now you predict uh, uh, making uh, uh, a tetra quark. Uh, and these things uh, should exist. A big question is uh, uh, whether such uh, configuration would not quickly disintegrate into individually confined uh, quarks, so two, two mesos. And if this happens too fast, then tetra quark would be so broad that uh, maybe uh, not really detectable. Similarly, you can make uh, uh, penta quarks uh, uh, playing these games. Uh, uh, in, in QCD, you can uh, uh, take uh, two diquarks and combine it uh, with uh, antiquark, and uh, uh, they will buy. And again, big question, which is more difficult to answer from theory, is, you know, is, is there some mechanism to suppress a quick fall apart and therefore uh, ma make it a state uh, with, with some uh, uh, reasonable width that, that can be detected. All right, now, in addition to the diquark, uh, uh, in terms of multi-quark states, in addition to this diquark mechanism suggested uh, from QCD, we know that uh, you can create uh, stable uh, multi-quark structures via nuclear type of interactions uh, like uh, a deuteron is, is often described as uh, two nucleons uh, exchanging uh, uh, a light meson, so color neutral object and this naive uh, 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 graphical simulation tries to depict this. In fact, th this is how you cover predicted existence of pi meson and, and, uh, and uh, even estimated its mass. So that's a usual phenomenology for uh, describing this type of interaction as exchange of light mesons. Doesn't have to be pi on, can be an, uh, could be other uh, light mesons. Now the question, so we know this happens between baryons. A uh, big question is, uh, would such forces uh, uh, exist uh, also between meson, meson or meson baryon pass? And if they do, are they strong enough uh, you know, to create uh, bound states? Now, very often uh, such states uh, re recently are referred to as molecular. And I suppose this is the distant analogy between exchange of valence quark in this picture with a picture of exchanging outer electrons when binding atoms into molecules. Now, so the same, uh, uh, let's say, uh, four quark uh, uh, a combination can be either uh, organized into a, a compact diquark tetra quark where uh, uh, where uh, color forces uh, uh, create that spectrum, or you could organize it into a molecule. Now, if you detect just single state, uh, it, it, uh, you may have to do a lot of uh, uh, measurements of properties of this, of, of such particle to, uh, to um, get insight into substructure. But if you start detecting uh, other family members, then you should be able to distinguish very quickly because these direct color interactions will create a very rich spectrum, just like in mesons and baryons. Whereas uh, these molecular states, uh, we know from nuclear physics that the binding energy is, is not much, just few MeV. Uh, uh, this potential, well, it's not very deep. Uh, so we typically expect just one bound state out of uh, uh, such binding and no angular momentum uh, between constituents. 
So it's fairly constrained in terms of uh, mass of the state, but also kind of uh, quantum numbers you can produce. Uh, you, you can get them directly from uh, quantum numbers of constituents, how you can combine them. Now, uh, this uh, uh, Dyquark uh, states can be very broad if there's no mechanism to uh, prevent uh, fast fall apart. On the other hand, in this uh, molecular picture, if, if the state is really below, uh, is, is well bound, then you, you get good uh, weight suppression mechanism because you are below uh, uh, threshold to just fall apart into constituents. So you need to somehow, uh, uh, you know, get quarks from one meson uh, to combine with quarks with the other meson for the decay. So this naturally produces uh, narrow, narrow states. Now we, we don't know for, uh, at least until recently, we didn't know for sure if either one of these exists. Now, uh, heavy hadrons, uh, often lead the way experimentally. So let me remind you about important the role uh, Charmonium played in development uh, of quark theory. Initially, uh, quark theory was uh, met with big skepticism, was introduced uh, objects with fractional elementary charts. Nobody could see them directly. So there were a lot of skeptics. This all ended with so-called November Revolution of 1974, where extremely narrow JSI state uh, was discovered, uh, which uh, uh, was followed soon by discovery of uh, many family members of the system. Uh, it was clear that uh, uh, the spectrum was easy to reproduce in simple uh, QQ bar model uh, with even with non-relativistic potential. So since then nobody uh, have, had doubts about quarks. So the nature uh, gave us big thumbs up with, with the quark idea. So this is the first time we saw that, you know, heavy, uh, heavy quark hadrons uh, can play important role because uh, you separate masses of constituents from interaction energies, which, uh, which can be really helpful in understanding what's going on. And uh, more formally, it's a source of some effective theories uh, that can be applied to such systems. Uh, to, to illustrate uh, how different uh, spectroscopy of heavy quarks is, uh, let me, to light spectroscopy, let me compare it. I picked, uh, uh, you know, a uh, spectrum of, of excited chaos. The black dashes are mass, predicted masses. This is uh, uh, from one of the popular uh, uh, relativized potential models and, and in red the positions of, of um, measured states. Uh, and, and you see that, uh, uh, you know, the model qualitatively it tells us what to expect, but in no means uh, can predict masses precisely. Um, now, uh, to big extent, the problem is that these states are super relativistic and also that all the excitations are above the threshold to have so-called Aussie allowed uh, decay. So in modern language involving soft gluons or such uh, processes happen very quickly. So the widths, so these are stable states, widths are large can go to hundreds of MeV. So you can essentially do um, qualitative spectroscopy with excitations other than quantitative. Now already in Charmonium, we have a, a, a quite a few very narrow states with, uh, with widths which are from fraction MeV to uh, maybe a few MeV, maybe 10 MeV, some of these states. And the reason why they are so narrow is that they are below a so-called open flavor threshold. 
So uh, threshold for this uh, fast uh, uh, OCI allowed process. So the way the states uh, uh, can decay hadronically is the annihilation, hard gluons, so such uh, processes are suppressed and leads are, are, are narrow. Now this is even more dramatic uh, when you do when you go to uh, bottom onion system you have much larger number of these long leaf states uh, okay now the heavy hadrons is not only a convistas but uh, uh, mesons uh, are simple qq bar systems in recent years it also uh, 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 provided uh, uh, evidence that once you exceed these open flavor thresholds, then uh, things can get very complicated quick. For light spectroscopy, this happens immediately, but for uh, heavy quark systems, uh, you first go through a number of simple narrow states before you get to that regime. And the first famous indication of this was discovered by Bell experiment of 3872. That's a state above uh, psi 2s. Psi 2s is, is last uh, uh, no, uh, normal narrow uh, charmonium state below the uh, open flavor threshold. But 3872 sits right at the DD star bar threshold and it's very narrow, 1 MeV. Now it could be actually conventional charmonium um, uh, excited uh, uh, spin 1 P state uh, because this cannot decay to DD bar, a bar is missing there. Um, However, there are other very odd things about the state. In particular, it was discovered in uh, isospin violating decay. These two pions seem to come from rho. So large isospin violation uh, for normal charmonium states is certainly very unexpected. This and also its mass uh, fueled the suggestions that it is a loosely bound uh, DD star molecule. Now it's, it's a very confusing state. Uh, a lot of things are known experimental about it, but experimental signals are mixed. Sometimes it behaves like a, like a compact state. Sometimes it behaves like molecule. So there are no simple answers and even after 1800 citations, this is the most quoted paper by Bell, which otherwise is dedicate, was dedicated to uh, studies of CP violation in, in, in the mesons. Uh, people are still arguing about nature of the state. It's, it's quite possible that more than one dynamical mechanism is at play here. Now later people discovered more threshold states, both in charmonium and bottomonium, uh, so-called Z sub B states and Z sub C states dis discovered by uh, Bell uh, and, and Bess operating at, uh, um, at the plus minus but lower energies. And these, uh, these states uh, show up uh, uh, near uh, uh, pseudo vector vector or vector vector thresholds in both systems uh, masses are uh, very near these thresholds and uh, and the widths are small they are of the order of uh, uh, you know uh, 10, 20 30 mv that's that's pretty narrow for such massive objects uh, so this, uh, most of people, uh, uh, they think this uh, fits, uh, uh, favors this molecular uh, uh, hypothesis, even though some people argue that uh, 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 this may not be uh, so simple. And the one odd thing is that they peak not below, but slightly above this threshold. So there are people arguing 
uh, that uh, this, this actually has to do some uh, diquark tetraquark. So the arguments are going on. Clearly, more experimental uh, data are needed about uh, decay and production pattern to to answer these questions. Now let me uh, now uh, tend to pentaquarks. Uh, many of you may remember uh, there were uh, about uh, almost 20 years ago, there was a lot of excitement uh, related to uh, resume discovery of a tetraquark uh, with four uh, up and down quarks and uh, uh, anti strange quark, theta 1530. Unfortunately, this uh, turned out to be uh, most likely a, um, a false experimental signals. They went away with uh, uh, better experiments or more statistics. People have been pretty depressed about prospects uh, of observing pentaquarks until recently LHCB resurrected the subject in 2015. Uh, we detected a pretty uh, narrow structure in JSI proton. Uh, this, this cannot be confused with normal baryon because uh, uh, JSI CC bar uh, pair cannot be popped out out of uh, interacting energy of, of some normal QQQ bar. So this is a, a you know clearly a, a, a pentaquark type object. Uh, so maybe this is the time for me to introduce uh, our experiment. LHCB is uh, one of the four experiments uh, operating at LHC. It is looking directly at proton, proton collisions, just like ATLAS and CMS, but it's uh, doing so uh, only in forward direction. So the experiment looks, uh, in terms of geometry, more like a fixed target uh, experiment, but it is actually a collider experiment. What's interesting about this experiment is that this is the first Hadron Collider experiment ever, which was optimized to flavor physics. Its main mission is to uh, study CP violations and rare decays of, of heavy quarks. But at the same time, uh, the same uh, detector features make it very optimal to study uh, heavy Hadron spectroscopy. Uh, Maybe I will uh, uh, skip some uh, uh, ex experimental de details of the advantages of this detector. You can uh, ask me a question about this if you are interested later and we still have time. I think covering physics will be more interesting. Let me just mention uh, that the first phase of this experiment uh, ended and we are now uh, in the midst of upgrade. Most of the apparatus is being rebuilt. And this is in order so we can start operating at higher luminosity. LHCB has never operated at full luminosity that LHC can offer. Only ATLAS and CMS do. We have been always uh, defocusing beams uh, to, to get to the highest luminosity that we can digest. So to digest more luminosity, we need a better detector. So this is what's happening right now. Another big upgrade is uh, uh, planned for uh, 2030, where we would go into, into higher luminosities, which already can be delivered by LHC. So it's just a, a matter of detector upgrade rather than machine upgrade. Let me come back to uh, that pentaquark discovery. A lot of that work was done uh, at Syracuse uh, by me and, uh, and my uh, PhD student. We published two papers. The second paper uh, proved uh, in a, a pretty much model independent way that this narrow peak could not be a reflection of any conventional hadrons, which in this case would be excited lambdas. The first and uh, more famous paper that we published was complicated uh, 
amplitude analysis, so model dependent analysis, and that uh, analysis uh, uh, showed that this narrow peak uh, certainly needs to be an exotic pentaquark, and uh, the data seem to require another broad state. Um, now this this is already the most cited uh, paper by uh, LHCB, even though again LHCB is mostly uh, devoted to uh, CKN physics. Uh, now let me go uh, briefly through interpretations of these uh, pentaquark states. Of course, uh, uh, people are in favor of uh, tightly tight color bound, bounding uh, uh, try to explain these states and also become uh, pushing these loosely bound uh, molecules to uh, try to uh, explain these states. Now uh, the main problem uh, for um, tight uh, bounding uh, binding interpretation is that the state is 400 MeV above J psi proton uh, decay threshold. So that's a lot of energy. So uh, normal disintegration uh, should be extremely fast and such states should be broad. So how do we uh, suppress such a quick fall apart? Well, this is where people would uh, invoke diquarks. You know, if you start uh, putting them in diquarks, maybe this produces some barrier between C and C bar for them to uh, recombine it into J psi. And this is kind of fit the idea that we observed uh, one uh, broad state which would have no angular momentum between uh, this diquark and C bar and, and one narrow uh, state which would. And some people would also like try to make Likewise here. So if this was true, there should be a lot of uh, states like that uh, uh, for all kind of angular momentum, radial and uh, uh, spin configurations. Now this loosely bound pentaquark interpretation, this really fits only that uh, um, narrower state. Uh, it was uh, uh, below uh, appropriate uh, D star sigma C plus threshold. So this would explain uh, why such state is narrow. So if this was true, there would be only a few states uh, at the right thresholds. Uh, there were also some suggestions that maybe these are not bound states, but uh, some triangle uh, diagram uh, reflections. I will not go into it because of time limitations. Now, uh, maybe you heard that last year uh, we published uh, an update. Uh, by having almost 10 times more data, we were able to uh, see that what we thought was this 4450 was not one state but two states and we also recognized that we missed a narrow state at, at the lower mass uh, uh, 4312 MeV and what's amazing about this observation is that all these three states uh, are uh, uh, near the appropriate uh, meson baryon thresholds where binding is expected and that in fact higher thresholds since both particles have spin can produce two rather than one state. These states are also narrow so uh, so uh, no doubt that uh, this last year publication favors uh, molecular interpretation of these states. Uh, existence of that uh, 3312, that's interesting because uh, uh, pion cannot be exchanged here between uh, uh, such states. So it, it, it must be that uh, pi pi or rho exchange is, is actually very important. 
It was not clear from this tetra quark candidate, sorry, for these uh, threshold states uh, uh, in in meson because there are no states where the D, D bar or B, B bar. All right, so this tightly bound pentaquark model uh, has difficulties in explaining narrow widths and also the mass splitting between this lower mass state and, and higher mass. Uh, it, it's difficult to describe in this, this model. However, you know, to be sure that these are molecular states. Experimentalists have to uh, uh, measure quantum numbers uh, to confirm uh, these very specific predictions. Also, sigma c star uh, is relatively narrow, not as narrow as the other two, but relatively narrow, so it should uh, produce uh, molecular states near uh, its thresholds with the, uh, the of, of the star. So more data will be useful here. So I just uh, told you that there are a bunch of uh, states uh, related to both uh, charmonium-like and bottomonium-like states that uh, appear near thresholds are narrow. This is hard to ignore, that's a clear pattern. Theoretical disputes are about exact dynamics of these, uh, are these real bound states or, 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 or something more complex. I'm completely confident that in the future we will detect uh, uh, more uh, threshold states uh, in these systems. However, there have been a lot of uh, discoveries of strangely behaving uh, unexpected states which are not at thresholds and they are not narrow. I will just give you a few examples. One example are J sci fi states observed in, in BD case. Now uh, this had a long experimental history. Uh, the latest word on this is amplitude analysis that I published with, uh, uh, with a different uh, uh, PhD student at Syracuse. We showed that uh, there are four prominent peaks of the whole family of states which are now larger of the order, you know, more around 100 uh, than 10 MeV. And they are not at thresholds. Uh, so they are, they instantly became candidates for uh, Dyquark uh, type candidates. Now, even earlier, there were also uh, states uh, uh, like uh, famous C4430, decaying to Psi prime charge pi, which was first discovered by Bell. In LHCB, we showed that the state uh, actually does exist. And we showed that its uh, phase behaves like a, a, a real resonance. And then there's a bunch of states uh, discovered uh, uh, only at E plus E minus uh, colliders. Uh, first, uh, these are vector states, but strange vector states well above flavor threshold. The first one of the type was 4260 discovered by Babar. Uh, now vector states in this mass range were already identified excitation of S and B waves in conventional charmonium and they show up as broad peaks in total cross section. This actually, uh, this state is narrow, it is uh, decaying to pi pi and the charmonium, this should not be really happening with any significant rate above uh, these masses. So that's very strange. Uh, later in recent years, Bell uh, precisely scanned that mass region and they showed that the state is more likely coincidence of two even narrower states, and there are also bumps uh, at higher mass. Again, it's not clear what's the nature of uh, these states. It could be actually that we are starting to see heavy hybrids here, or some people again uh, want to see uh, these diquark tetraquarks uh, producing these peaks. 
Now, one thing is that there is no single model which can explain all these effects at the same time. There are some uh, interesting evidence for dikewacks from uh, newly discovered heavy baryons, but since I'm running out of time, I will skip this. Uh, LHCB also discovered the double charmed baryon. This is very interesting because if in such baryon we replace that light uh, quark with a light dye quark, you predict uh, a tetra quark and using the same uh, theoretical models as predicted mass of it, uh, uh, Xi sub uh, double C baryon, you can predict masses of these tetra quarks. And uh, there is one state, lowest excitation of one plus, which will be extremely close or, or if you go to heavier quarks uh, below a threshold for uh, decay to other hadrons, which would mean there will be a stable hadron, it would have to decay weakly. So this will be pretty spectacular. QCD uh, uh, came up with uh, consistent predictions. So this is something for the future to look for. Uh, would be really spectacular. Now that the discovery of double chambario also signal that LHCB was approaching sensitivity to detect uh, uh, tetra quark states uh, uh, with, with two uh, hidden charm uh, pairs. Uh, now, um, in terms of producing uh, such four charm quarks, you can produce them via double parton scattering. So you have two pairs of colliding gluons uh, from uh, incoming protons. Now this is not likely to produce interacting charm charm pairs. Uh, so this is largely responsible for production of non-interacting charmonium states. And in fact, such uh, uh, production was <coughs> studied with help of JSI, JSI before by all three experiments, MS Atlas and LHCB. This dominates high mass region away from threshold, but also tends to populate lower transverse momenta of the uh, combined JSI, JSI system. Now, if you produce all four quarks in single gluon gluon collision, then you have better chance for these quarks to interact. So discovery of this double charm barrier was, uh, must have gone through this type of process. Now getting uh, these anti-charm quarks to uh, bind at the same time and interact with uh, charm charm dye quark is another uh, or the, uh, suppressions in production rate. So it was not clear with a present data sample was enough to observe such states. So it was a pleasant su surprise for us to see that we could already detect something. Now, this process can produce both non-resonant and, uh, and resonant uh, uh, quark pairs. And on top of it, these two types can interfere. Now, this is more likely to populate uh, low masses uh, of JSI JSI pairs where uh, tetra quark masses are expected, but also more likely to produce uh, higher transverse momentum for this pass. So that's an experimental tool that uh, LHCB used to enhance uh, this favorable production mechanism. Now, such tetra quarks have been predicted for a long time. The first paper was published in 1985. There is a nice article by Mayani, which posted uh, just recently in archive that contains uh, a lot of good references. But you can see uh, that uh, rich uh, mass spectrum expected for tetra quarks, very dense, a lot of, even for same quantum numbers, you can get many nearby states. 
but you also get an idea about the mass range of these states. You can also, depending on quantum number, predict whether they will go to, what kind of charmonium pair it will go to. JSI, JSI is very easy for experimentalists because JSI has high rate to dimuon pairs. Very clean, easy to trigger on. But we notice that other states will decay to like JSI, KC. KC states have very high branch, radiative branching ratios to JSI, so they can also produce JSI, JSI pairs, but with undetected photon, this will shift their masses away from their no nominal masses towards uh, lower values. Now, one interesting thing in this system is that uh, there are no light quarks uh, in this quark combination. So normal mechanisms for uh, nuclear type interactions don't exist. So you don't expect any molecular states or hadron-hadron scattering effects here. So if you see something, this would be the best signal for diquark tetraquarks. So uh, just uh, uh, a little bit over a month ago, LHCB went public uh, with uh, uh, analysis of JSI JSA pairs. They are produced uh, by this uh, gluon uh, uh, fusion. Uh, we have like uh, 30,000 uh, of pairs. Uh, the mass spectrum is shown here. And you can see with bare eye that there is something interesting going on. There is a narrow peak at 6.9 GV. This is where a, a bunch of these states were predicted. This whole range near threshold is where these states should be. Uh, occurring, maybe there is a bump at the higher mass and it will take more data to see if it's, this is significant or not. There's a very broad thing at threshold which could be many states or it could be feed down from the, these JSI KC states with undetected photon or maybe it's some non-resonant followed by a dip rather than peak uh, which can come from negative destructive interferences. So interpretation of this spectrum is, is not straightforward. We have proven in model independent way, uh, essentially not assuming uh, much at all, that this is not a smooth spectrum. So that's very important. We have proven that there are some significant structures and then the rest of the results are model dependent uh, depending, you know, whether you fit uh, two states, one state, two states, uh, interfering or not. This dip could be interference between two states. So when uh, parameters that you get for possible states, that's very model dependent. But we know for sure that uh, these are not very narrow things. This narrowest peak is like 80 MeV. So this doesn't really fit molecular uh, model, even though there is a chi C0, chi C1 threshold right there. This width is too much for molecular state. And also, as I said, theoretically, you don't expect uh, such charmonium pairs to bind. Therefore, this is considered to be the best evidence uh, for diquark, tetraquarks. And there's a lot of left for us to do determine actually what we see, identify quantum numbers and look uh, for, uh, for structures in different charmonium pairs. Oops. Okay, so that's my last slide. Uh, uh, now in terms of uh, once you cross that open flavor threshold uh, in charmonium and bottomonium, we, you know charmonium spectrum much better. Then in addition to these expected normal QQ bar states, we get this whole jungle of states and they don't seem to come from one thing. Some are threshold states, some are not. There are clearly too many states at threshold for this to be just coincidence. But there are still open questions. Are there really 
bound molecular states or something more complicated related to hadron hadron interactions. We now have very tantalizing evidence for uh, diquark hadrons, and the strongest evidence comes from the recent JSI JSI uh, mass structure. Uh, again, a lot of uh, things uh, need to happen experimentally uh, and theoretically. There are possibly uh, hybrids mixing in into that uh, Charmonium spectrum, still an open question. And to me, you know, once you see these things uh, show up in such a strong way above open flavor threshold, the question is whether these degrees of freedom will not somehow start modifying properties of states even below flavor threshold. So this calls for, you know, precision and spectroscopy of these narrow states. So that's still interesting about. All right, so let me end at this. And, uh, you know, your uh, questions or comments are welcome. Thank you very much, Thomas. Really great talk. Um, everyone hopefully believes this. Um, any, quest any questions or comments you can write in the chat or you can unmute yourself or I will unmute you and we will, uh, if you write it in chat, I'll say it. I actually have a question. Do you expect PA and AA collisions, so proton lead and lead lead collisions, to clarify things? If people yes, yes, I, 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 actually we do, and this is. You know, if I had more time, I would certainly touch on that. Uh, we seem to be at the beginning that uh, the ion collisions uh, will start playing a role. That's, that's a different way uh, to produce many heavy quads. There's a lot of energy there, right? So no problem uh, providing enough energy to produce uh, uh, such a uh, heavy pairs. So, uh, you know, it's, it's possible that uh, uh, these multi-quark, heavy multi-quark states uh, will be well produced and CMS recently managed to detect uh, X3872 uh, in, uh, uh, I believe, in that lead collisions. It remains to be uh, seeing whether this is a uh, molecular state or, or a modified uh, charmonium, but certainly, you know, measuring uh, a production of these candidates, uh, whether you can see it or not, and if you can see it, maybe with large statistics, you can start studying uh, behavior depending on type of uh, um, heavy ion collision which you saw. Uh, how these states uh, get suppressed or not suppressed when go through uh, nuclear matter, right? So this this is, uh, I think, in the future, it will be very interesting input to this type of exotic spectroscopy. Um, I want to, uh, to ask something uh, in the line that Dojo asked already. Uh, for such a scenario that described now, we, I, I have the impression that we need very high energies, higher than the available energies that, that heavy ion collisions. Yeah? I'm not an expert, so you teach me. <laughs> And because uh, I think these guys are very heavy, I don't know how can they be produced by uh, current energies. I don't know. At the Maybe LHC, to, to... in the LHC lead lead collision, my understanding is that you have order of ten cc bar pairs per event. In a lead lead. Uh, yeah, my understanding. Yes, but, yeah. but 
I guess it is the temperature that matters, yeah? Don't know. Yeah, yeah, certainly interesting uh, topic that we are all interested uh, in. So I personally actually would love to talk more to uh, people studying uh, heavy ion collisions uh, about uh, prospects or lack of them. Uh, well, let me also t uh, tell you that uh, I mean, LHCB has a heavy ion group and uh, we have a, a new American group uh, from Los Alamos who joined LHCB just to, uh, to study this type of physics, the special alliance. But they, they have access to our normal data too and they produce a very interesting paper on production of X3872 in proton-proton collisions, but they looked at it as a function of event multiplicity, which is something that particle physicists like myself would never thought about this, but I understand that this is more typical activity for things that you guys do. Uh, uh, studying how things change depending on uh, event characteristics. A and they showed that X3872 behaves very differently than uh, Psi2S. They both go to pi plus pi minus J Psi, so that's a convenient comparison. Uh, X3872 production seems to be suppressed when you go to high multiplicities as compared to uh, normal charmonium. So that's, that's certainly a hint, it's, it's, it's not a pure charmonium, but I understand from theoretical interpretation of this measurement that uh, it's not uh, that the production doesn't get suppressed fast enough if it was a pure molecule. So some people take it as some system in between, maybe uh, like, um, in fact, uh, 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 diquark, tetraquark, which would be, uh, would have some uh, properties in between. But, oh, sorry. Yeah, that shows that, you know, more interactions between uh, heavy ion and high energy particle community will, will, will be very beneficial. More questions? Just as a comment to Masood, I mean, the charmonium pairs are in initial state but because they are very few after all, they're conserved within an event and then freeze out somehow makes it into hadron. So no one knows, I mean. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand you that uh, they're not from the thermal best, they are actually from the initial collisions, yeah? Yeah. It would be at least theoretically interesting to understand the modification of this high mass states in the medium. Okay, more questions? Uh, I have one, Giorgio. Sure. Okay. Uh, thanks, Professor, for your interesting talk. And uh, my question is more about your personal impressions about the the models that try to understand that why uh, X, Y, and Z states like glue balls, Hadoop charmonium, those uh, interactions between anti diquarks, diquarks, and even meson-meson molecules. Uh, 
according to your impressions, your, or your personal uh, uh, um, thoughts, which one of those models do you think that is more likely to succeed to, the, to describe those, those states? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, there will be more than one because I don't believe that all the things that we see come from the same dynamics. And I tried to, in fact, make this point in my talk that there's definitely a bunch of uh, threshold states which are narrow, too many to be ignored, too striking differences to say that these are some kind of dichroic interactions. So they are somehow related to these uh, hadron hadron thresholds. So when they are truly bound molecules, that's a, a you know, more detailed question. There may be virtual states or dynamically generated uh, something, or maybe even some kind of hadron rescattering. Uh, that's, that's still open, but certainly some kind of hadron hadron forces definitely mark their presence in many of these structures. But however, there are so many other things. That I'm personally convinced that this diquark concept is is pretty solid one. However, it's not clear that these diquarks will play equally important role in all quark combinations. It makes a big difference if you have all heavy quarks or you have too heavy and too light and all light, you know, the roles of these diquark structures is very likely to be different and it will manifest itself more clearly in one system and less clearly in the others. When it manifests itself less clearly, you know, it's, it's probably not as simple as those diquarks, also some other color configuration play a role, and therefore it's very difficult to construct a good model. But uh, I do have hopes that things like JSI, JSI, you know, for heavy quarks, hopefully in the future we'll get to, you know, other uh, heavy systems, maybe a, a BB bar, CC bar, right, which might have even more spectacular uh, features, maybe, maybe narrower states, maybe deeper bound, right? So I, I'm actually optimistic uh, uh, about the dichworks. I do think there's a lot of evidence for them from heavy baryons already too. So I, I don't necessarily think we have to choose one or the other. Uh, you know, uh, bo both, both can be at play and, and responsive for different structures. Now there are more models, I didn't mention hydrocharmonium, right? How, how well such model is motivated, uh, that's not for me to judge. It seems to me that hydrocharmonium is a little bit ad hoc, uh, less input from QCD or, or nuclear physics. Uh, and certainly if you look at hydrocharmonium calculations, it's not really all that predictive model, they, they have some completely unknown um, scales that they fix uh, uh, on, on one state and maybe they can reproduce the other, but uh, I don't see it as very successful picture of what's going on so far. Um, okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Any more questions? If not, I'm stopping to record. Last minute. Thank you very, very much again. And thank you everyone for attending. Yeah, thank you again for invitation. I hope to visit you in person. Please. In the future. Please. <laughs> I have never been to Sao Paulo area. So. Uh,
ಸ್ಮೃತಿ 